Naomi Nassan. Welcome back to another li- another episode of Our Life Beginning and Always. We're continuing where we left off last time, doing more moments from step two. Today we're going to be doing wave. And if we have time for anything else, we'll probably go and hit mall. But that depends on how long this uh, moment takes. I'm trying to stop these episodes from being more than 30 to 40 minutes, so we'll see how that goes. The family shopping trip had lasted most of the morning, and you still had to unload everything from the trunk before you could go enjoy the afternoon. You cradled another bag in your arms as you headed towards your house. It was one of the heavier bags from the grocery store, loaded with fresh apples, ripe tomatoes, a bunch of carrots, and even half a watermelon. Ma came out from the front door and paused just ahead of you. It's no trouble. Need any help with that, Blue? I can bring in the rest of it. I can bring it in the rest of the way if you want me to. I got it. It, 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 it. No, I got it. I was doing just fine. Even if it was large, it wasn't really any problem for you. Ma gave you an encouraging grin and rustled her fingers through your blue hair. Oh, she knows what color my hair is. That's adorable little features. Of course, the rest of my hair is brown, so she's ruffling just one side of my head. Interesting. Because no part of my hair is completely blue, so that, that's just interesting like to add just to the one half of my hair. But I'm okay with it. You set the next bag on the counter. Your older sister began to root around inside for the contents with a sigh. Uh, how much is left? Still a few more bags. With a huff and a puff, Elizabeth continued putting away the groceries you retreated out of the kitchen before you could become the target of her bad mood. Be careful. Careful, Blue. You hadn't been looking where you were going and bumped right into Mom, almost stepping on her toes to boot. Sorry. I can give you a pass this time, but be sure to watch where you're going. If you run into the wrong person, you might get your license revoked. She grinned at the bad joke as you continued through the door. Outside, Ma has started organizing what remained what remained, and putting back any loose objects that had fallen out during the trip. When you stepped up to the trunk beside her, she took a big breath of air, her dress gently swaying around in the breeze. That's a shame. It's a shame we had to spend the morning cooped up in that shopping center. It's a beautiful day, don't you think? You tilted your head to the sky, gazing at the clear blue expanse. Yeah, it is. You closed your eyes and enjoyed the way the sun warmed your face for a few moments before turning back to help Ma with the groceries. Da da da! It's a da da da! We don't know what is happening, but da da da! Oh, hi, Cove! Hi, Cove! You noticed Mom wave over at Cove, who had just exited his front door, his surfboard propped up under his under one arm. Hmm. Let me guess, surfboard in a wetsuit? Where you might be off to on this beautiful day. Cove instantly startled, not having realized your family was also out here, even though your mom was the one who called out. You were the one he looked uh, ah! You were the one he looked at. He tried to settle down again. Cove stayed on his side of the driveway, giving a small wave and greeting. After a moment or two of deliberation, he jogged over to properly say hello to you and your moms. It was decidedly awkward since Cove had trouble figuring out how close to stand to you. The addition of his unwieldy surfboard made the whole thing seem even clumsier. <laughs> Careful with that thing, you'll put someone's eye out. Mom chuckled and got a whispered reproach from Ma for it. Pam, please go easy on him. Cove winced. He wasn't a big fan of attention under normal circumstances, so it so this particular moment, he was probably wishing he could be invisible. Look how cute he is! Look at that adorable blush! Oh, he's so adorable! Don't mind her, honey. How are you doing today? I'm alright. Just gonna surf. Hi, Cove! He had relaxed a little when Ma spoke to him, but the rigidity all came back as soon as you said something. Hey. Why is it coming back? What is this going on? What is going through your mind, my dear man? Hi hey, Blue. He met your eyes and it almost felt like you had butterflies in your stomach. If you want to go to the beach, we can hang out there later. 
You notice the flush of red on his cheeks, but that might have just been from the heat. You're making excuses, Blue! You don't make exclusives, he's blushing! He's blushing! He's blushing like an adorable little baby boy. Sure, I'll meet you there when we're done. Cool! That must have been more enthusiastic than he had intended because he immediately quieted down. You're not done unloading, right? Can I help? No, no, no. 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 This is our job. You go enjoy the beach. Blue can catch up as soon as she's finished here. All right, see ya. Bye for now. Cove headed headed on down to the beach with more skip in his step than normal. It was really cute. You smiled softly to yourself at the thought you'd be joining him soon. He sure seemed to perk up after you agreed to meet him there. I wonder what that could be. Ma! Ma! Now who's giving him a hard time, Lonnie? Shush. Shush, it's different. What do you mean by him? I, I am female, my pronouns are female. What the hell, Mom? Mom's face broke into an incredulous grin. In what way? I'm being supportive and he can't hear it. Mom laughed at this time. Lonnie. Oh, is she talking about Cove? Why would they be talking about Cove though? They, they were talking, she was teasing me. This, this conversation's confusing. You're the worst of us. Ah! You're the worst of us when it comes to this, honestly. I keep trying to warn people, but they won't listen. I only want to help. I think it's fair to say he might need it. Meddler, but you have a point, <laughs> right? You narrowed your eyes at their teasing. They simply chuckled conspiratorially before taking more bags from the trunk and heading inside. Once everything had finally been taken in and put away, you got yourself ready to meet Cove at the beach. You've been practicing your surfing more and more lately. It was always ready to go. After grabbing your board and getting everything ready, you headed down to the beach. Have fun. Have fun, honey. Stay safe. When you arrived at the shore, you were greeted by the crash of waves and the soft calls of seagulls. You took in a lungful of ocean air and felt your olive, war olive skin warm in the sun. You noticed a small set of with a towel, some sunscreen, and a bottle of water. It must be Cove's. You spied Cove him himself nearby. He hadn't gone out to sea yet. He was just sitting in the sand at the water's edge, his board propped up beside him. You ran up beside him. Hey, are you waiting for someone? Blue. He looked up at you with a smile and quickly hopped to his feet. I was gonna, I was gonna go in on my own. It kind of seemed like you weren't coming. Excuse you, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. He chuckled shyly at your insistence. Okay. He then cast his eyes out towards the waves. Will you give me some tips? Cove surfed more often than you did, so you knew he'd have some good tips to help you improve. <laughs> yeah, let's get started. You tucked your board under your arm and the two of you ran into the water together. You paddled out into the sea where the good waves were. The water was cool against your skin. It's nice. Mm, not too calm, but nothing crazy. It looks like a perfect, it looks perfect today. Look at him! He looks so cute! He smiled contently at you and you couldn't help but smile back. It felt totally content. You felt totally content, bleh, until Cove kicked water a little too hard and it inadvertently splashed you. Hey! Sorry. Did that hit you? Sorry. You, cr you could tell he really did feel bad that you had gotten caught in the crossfire. I'm splashing you back though. You laughed, but waited for an opening for revenge. The second he looked away, you kicked him back, spraying him. Seriously? Is there any way to treat someone who's trying to help? I came here to teach you. I was just following your example. <laughs> Cove, this is supposed to be adorable, Cove. Cove tried to keep a straight face, but ended up looking away. The water flicked at him, landed in shiny droplets in his hair. Then here's another lesson. He soaked you deliberately this time. He used his full leg and an impressive curtain of water hit you in the face. 
You lost your balance and scrambled to keep hold of the board. You just managed to stay on, but it was close. Cove winced. Are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm fine, but we should do some real teaching. Yeah. He chuckled awkwardly and shook some water out of his ear. With that, Cove started telling you all the tips and tricks of how to stay on a surfboard. He demonstrated both good and bad posture and explained where you needed to put your weight. Like this? You wiggled your body so that you were more in the center of your board. Cove nodded. Yep, just like that. The little lesson continued and... You may not have been entirely sure of yourself before, but that was rapidly changing. You were definitely getting into it. Occasionally, he reached out and touched you more to directly help get the positions right. It felt nice. But you... If you acknowledged you noticed his touch at all, he would instantly pull away. Oh, you poor bashful boy! Da 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 hots! Da 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 hots! Da 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 hots! Cove, why can't you fill up this silence? But you gotta give me da 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 hots! Since you'd spent so much time working on balance in stable water, you wondered when you'd actually get to catch some waves. You brought it up to Cove and he nodded. If you think you're ready, go for it. You'll do great. All right. With that, you graduated from Cove's class and the two of you were able to surf together more casually, even if he was still better at it. What an afternoon. The sun setting was visible on the horizon. I gotta change that back. On the horizon, every time you would look away, it had sunk a little lower. The beach was darkening, but still pleasantly warm. You knew you should get out of the water, but it was completely dark in the sea. You rode one last wave to get back to the beach. There, you picked up your surfboard and gave it one and gave it a quick once over. Ko followed behind you to the shore. He pulled his surfboard with his other things and grabbed his towel and start to start drying off. As he ruffled his hair with the towel, you watched the sunset together. The colors were beautiful in the distance, and the shadows around you deepened. There was no need for words between you two as you both enjoyed the sight for a moment. Cove broke the silence. The waves were good today, I think. Perfect for surfing. He nodded mildly. You chatted a little more until the conversation truly did die out and all you heard was the rhythmic sound of waves. Then Cove sighed. Mm. The day can't be over, not yet. He scowled into the distance as if the sun Exiting the sky was a personal offense. Don't you think it should be longer? Cove stood up straight in defiance of the approaching darkness. I'm not gonna go home yet. I wanna go somewhere. I don't know. Cove was still dripping in salt water, and so you weren't sure what the alternative was. Wetsuits were fine for the beach and not much else. It wasn't a good idea for him to lug his surfboard around town either. You'll be real cute in that wetsuit wherever you go. Ko's face and ears flushed red as he looked down and inspected himself. He crossed his hands over his chest self-consciously. He had been so used to wearing it that Cove hadn't given his current choice of dress any thought. At least that was before you pointed it out to him. Well, you would too. Uh, so, um... Cove's eyes widened when he processed what he just said and awkwardly decided to give up on the whole thing. He then looked down the shore with wide, shining eyes. <laughs> There's at least one place it's always okay to hang out in, no matter what time it is. The park. You nodded. The park was virtually always empty. Even Elizabeth only went there, over there nowadays if she was looking for you. How times have changed. She used to be so protective of the place. In fact, the only person there was a there was a chance of running into might be that Jeremy kid. He brought up the idea to Cove and he cringed, but I'm still going. The sun is still there, a little, and I'm staying out as long as it is. I'm tagging along, why would I go home? Okay, let's go. Cove took a minute to put his stuff in order. He made sure to get it all, although he didn't take much care to shake the sand off. You dealt with your own things. The two of you finished at about the same time. As the final touch, Clo Cove plucked his glasses off the beach, then put them back on his face. He looked a little more—he looked more like himself now. He led the way—he led the way down the beach to the park. 
It wasn't far, so it didn't take you long at all. The sun still hadn't completely disappeared just yet when you made your when you made your arrival. Cove stuck his surfboard upright in the sand and tossed his towel over the top. By now, the two of you were mostly dry. The summer breeze on your skin kept you pleasantly warm. Cove idly walked over to the monkey bars. He grabbed them, feet flat on the ground, and pretended to go across. He def he'd definitely grown past, grown in the past few years. You could barely use the monkey bars yourself. There wasn't much space at all between you and the ground. When he got to a bar in the middle, Cove pulled himself up and through, and then sat on top of the bars. His legs dangled off the side of the bar he had perched on. I'm joining you! Without Cove's height advantage, getting up there was more difficult, but you made it. You climbed on the side of the monkey bars and pulled yourself up to the top. You settled yourself in between the two slates. 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 Slats. Slats. I don't know the term. <laughs> the skinny metal wasn't the most comfortable thing to sit on, though you enjoyed the height it gave you. Guess what? He smiled broadly and raised an eyebrow. He's not here. Right, that was true. There wasn't a single sign of Jeremy. Looks like it was just gonna be the two of you tonight. Cove hung his head and groaned dramatically. Your eyes widened when he whipped his head back up. No way. I can't believe how dumb my parents are for forcing me to come to this stupid place. Oh, he's trying to picture me. He's, I, I love you, Cove. Thank you, Cove. You're the best boy, Cove. You were taken aback and blinked for a second before you realized he was quoting Jeremy. <laughs> Ugh, parents don't know anything. Cove chuckled back at you, amused. You looked around, the old park, the streets you knew like the back of your hand, and the beach. These were your stomping grounds. You wondered how Cove actually felt, how much of his joke was just a joke, and how much was sincere dislike of this place. Moving had never been his choice. Do you actually like this neighborhood? Do you really have to ask that? I always have to ask, my dear boy! I remember how you acted! Cove kicked his legs carelessly as they dangled. He smiled softly. I like it here. I really do. It's a nice place. He didn't hesitate. There was no uncertainty. There was a th that was his genuine opinion. You're the best thing in the neighborhood, Cove. Cove flushed and started kicking his legs wildly like he was running in place. It didn't take long for the day to finally draw to a close. The sun was gone and it was dark. You chatted a little while longer, but it was definitely winding down. Ah, I wish days were longer. I wish this day was longer. His feet kicked out. It made him look like a pouty child. Oh well. Cove sighed and it was time to go home. He hopped down from the monkey bars with a thump when his feet hit the ground. You clambered down the monkey bars yourself. You lowered yourself more slowly than Cove and barely made a sound when your free feet reached the ground. Cove grabbed his surfboard and threw his tow towel around his neck with his water bottle in hand. He was ready. You both began to your trek up the road. It was a quiet night and you didn't run into anyone else. In what felt like no time at all, you had reached your street. As you walked, Cove smiled to himself. It was a soft expression and you couldn't help but wonder what put it there. Hey, don't keep all that thinking to yourself. I just remembered how when we were younger, it used to be such a big deal to come home after dark. You could indeed recall. You got sandy. Your parents would have something to say. If you got wet, your parents would have more to say. And if you came home after dark, well, your moms and his dad better have said it was okay beforehand. You used to need permission for everything. That small comment he made exposed just how much freedom you really had this summer. Cove looked up to the sky, a smile still on his face as the two of you walked side by side, reminiscing. When you came to your houses, you turned to each other. Bye. Thanks for the awesome day. Cove waved and you both turned around to your respective houses. It was a pleasant end to the outing, you thought. And that was only 20 minutes. We got time. We got time. We got time. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? I want to do mall like on its own, actually. So let's. Mm -hmm. 
Let's do growing and we'll then do mall next time and probably then road trip to end this all off. Early one afternoon, you found yourself in the living room with your family. It was another one of these summer days where it felt too hot to go outside, but it was too uncomfortable to do anything inside either. The air conditioner was cranked up as far as you can negotiate it, but everyone was still being pretty lazy. You, your moms, and your sister were lounging around while the TV blared on in the backdrop, ignored by all of you. You specifically were... Ah, let's be, I'm, I'm gonna be, hmm. I'm gonna be spread eagle on the carpet. You stared up at the ceiling, your eyes unfocused and mind clear of all thoughts. Elizabeth broke the silence with a loud groan. You glanced over. She was lying on her back over the couch, massaging her, massa massaging her calf with one hand. Ugh. I feel terrible. I'm dying in this house and my legs hurt. Mom looked up from her magazine she had barely been flipping through and frowned concerned. Could you have strained them somehow? Elizabeth flailed briefly, then flopped onto her side with a heavy sigh. I don't know, it just hurts. Sweetie. Oh, sweetheart. Ma got up from her seat at the kitchen table and walked over to your sister. She did a light pat on Elizabeth's shoulder symp sympathetically. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. Maybe it's growing pains? You could be taller by next fall. Elizabeth scoffed. She didn't look impressed by Ma's assessment. I'd rather be my height forever than deal with this. Mom walked over too, leaning against the back of the couch. Kids, they grow up so fast. Mm. Soon Elizabeth will have a home of her own. Maybe even with a nice husband and some kids if she feels like it. Wow, Ma! Wow, Mom! What the hell are you doing this for? She sniffed loudly and wiped out her eyes, but you could tell it was just a bit. You tilted your head. Even though you knew Elizabeth liked guys, it was hard to imagine her with a boyfriend or husband. She only seemed invested in hanging out with her group of friends, not chasing after boys. Mom must agree with you because she shook her head. No. Let's not exaggerate. She's still practically a child. But if you ever do pursue someone, Elizabeth, you can come talk to me about it. Definitely, we're always willing to lend an ear. Do I still make their voices sound too similar? Let, let me know in the comments if their voices just sound too similar because I'm, I'm making like the same inflection and I can't tell if I'm doing it or not. Because to me, they sound different. But I don't know if it's just me hearing my voice trying to be different. Elizabeth's features contor contorted in disgust. No. no way, I am not ta talking to my moms about this. About that. Mom's jaw dropped and she gasped in exaggerated display of shock. Her hand came up to rest against her chest. Ma only grinned. She didn't look offended by Elizabeth's quick response at all. It really wouldn't be so bad to come to us. I know what it's like to have a crush on a pretty boy or two. <laughs> I don't, but I can listen anyway. Mom snorted at her own joke while Mom burst into giggles. They were having a little too much fun at Elizabeth's expense. Elizabeth certainly wasn't feeling the amusement because she rolled her eyes and sat up. Thanks. I'm going back to my room. I'd rather melt alone. Thanks. She strode off towards the staircase, taking the steps two at a time. Your mom stared after her, then turned to each other with raised eyebrows. Whoops, Look like we looks like we scared her off with all the romance talk. Well? Oh well, we'll get her next time. You watched them titter with some surprise. Obviously, your moms liked women, but you had no idea the Ma liked guys too. Today was the first time you'd heard her say something like that. Wait, you've had crushes on guys? Since when? Ma turned to you, happy to bring you into things now that you'd spoken up. She smiled and nodded. Always, I like both. But I like your mom the most of everyone. She's special. Ma smiled and turned all sm soft in the corners, like it usually did when she looked at her. She pinched mom's cheeks lightly. Mom reached up to cup a hand over mom's, even when Ma stopped pulling at her cheek. Their hands remained clasped together. You're fantastic. Thanks, Lonnie. I think most women have charm, but no one can hold a candle to you. Aww. Amelia. 
Mom beamed, then kissed Mom on the cheek she had been pinching before. Oh, I'm gonna laugh at it. You chuckled quietly at their back and forth. They were always saying cutesy stuff like that to each other. Ma looked back at you, letting Mom's hand go with a brief squeeze. She settled down next to you, and Mom followed soon after. <laughs> you know, I'm also here to listen to you whenever you're ready. That offer isn't just for Elizabeth. In fact, I think that talk might be needed sooner for you. After all, you already have someone, isn't that right? Damn it, Ma! God darn it, Ma! Why do you gotta bring in my crush on my boy for no reason? Although... They should already know this. I took the boy on a date, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't really argue with my mother's here. Mom shook her head and elbowed Ma, but it was futile. Meddler? I'm gonna blush furiously. Ma only giggled and smiled, not looking the least bit apologetic. There's no reason... There's no rush, of course. You can take all the time you need to figure out who... What or who you want. It's okay. Don't think you have to stick with whatever you come up with right now. Either, life's nice like that. It can change and you can learn. Mom nodded in her agreement. The two of us are happy to hear you out. We may be able to relate better than you think. Still, we won't push the topic, at least most of the time. She gave Ma the weakest scathing look possible while being unable to stop grinning. I, let's say thanks. I'll think about it. Wonderful. Good. That's all we ask. Mom was let out another exaggerated sniffle. It didn't take a genius to realize it was fake. <sighs> First Elizabeth, and now you, Blue. Do you have to grow up? Hmm, yes. Children tend to do that from time to time. Your parents quickly grew absorbed in their conversation about re rearing kids. You took that as your cue to leave, getting so caught up you could spend some time alone in your room too. They let you go without a problem and you made your way up the stairs. You let out a sigh once you stepped into your room. It was probably sweltering in there as it was in the living room. Ah! It was just as sweltering, sweltering in there as it was in the living room. Probably even a little warmer. You couldn't even open your window since it was hotter outside. You just let the AC out. It's hot when you guys have AC on? What's wrong with your AC then? You dragged your feet as you crossed the room. You checked your current sweltering, sweltering condition in the God darn it. In the mirror as you passed it by. You thought back to the conversation you'd had downstairs about growing up and all that. After a moment, you stepped a little closer to the mirror. You stared into it, then turned away from the surface to look down at yourself. You were definitely growing, all right. It was weird to think about how you were now in comparison to what you'd been when you were younger. When it came to your body, it... Oh. Yep. Blue is based on, uh... Blue is based on me, and I already know her body type, so... <laughs> Muscle definition. You shifted to the side, your head still facing forward, and continuing self-evaluation from this viewpoint. Well, I'm, I'm female. This is uncomfortable! But I, I already know how blue looks, so it's not like I don't have the idea in my head. There was no mistaking it, even with your shirt helping to obscure your form you had now. I'm fine with it. Like, it was just a sign you were getting older. You could live with that. You took a step backwards and finished your impromptu inspection. You locked eyes with your reflection, cocking your head to the side. All things considered. I I think I think I look fantastic. I don't think I look too bad. Let's go with fantastic. You beamed, pleased with what you saw. You even winked for good measure before chuckling at yourself. You shook your head roughly, putting thoughts of what of what you were turning into out of your mind. This wasn't the time to focus on such things. You had to find something to do in this heat. You shuffled over your bed, collapsing onto the mattress. Your brow fur scrunched up in thought. Time passed slowly, slowly, and to your annoyance, possible ideas of what to do were few and far between. You weren't sure how long it had been, but eventually you had heard your mom call, 
call you from downstairs. Blue! There's a call for you! Cove wants to come over, is that alright? You perked up at the words, sitting up on, in bed. You yelled back to her immediately. Yeah! You got to your feet and headed downstairs, eager to see your friend. You needed to go downstairs soon anyway because your empty stomach told you it was almost time for lunch. Just as you reached the bottom of the stairs, you saw Mom put the phone back on the receiver. She glanced at Ma, leaning her hips against the kitchen counter. What a pickle. Well, here comes trouble. We better prepare ourselves. Ma clicked her tongue and in clear disapproval of Mom's words. Mm. He's such a good boy. Cuff never wants to cause trouble. He can just be a little thoughtless and impulsive. Oh, I know. He's very sweet, but that's what makes him more of a problem. If, a, if it was a stranger, some kid from school was egging Blue. What? Egging me to behave badly? Oh! 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 I think we can both agree that she'd do the right thing in the end. But if Cole, if Cove Holden got into a reckless mood and wanted Blue to be a part of the ride, can we really be certain of what call she'd make then? Well, damn, Mom! Damn! You brutal! Yeah. Yes, we can, Pamela. Blue would do whatever Cove wanted. Lonnie! Your mom giggled freely at Mom's reaction. You worry too much about those two together. Look, all I'm saying is that I haven't forgotten the time when they were kids and tried to run away together. Well, damn it, Mom! Stop bringing up all my childhood moments! Stop throwing it in my face, Mom! Uh, and then there was that time they snuck out in the middle of the night when Ko was supposed to sleep over? Ma just laughed and she turned away, still snorting, her eyes met yours. She blinked in surprise then waved at you with an easy grin. Mom looked over, noticing you at the foot of the stairs as well. Oh. oh, I didn't expect you to come down already, Blue. I just wanted you to know what was happening. I, I'm calling you out on that comment, Mom! I'm calling you out! Well, if I hadn't come down, then I wouldn't have heard everything you said. Busted! Pam. Oh, you got caught, Pam. What? What? You're saying things too. I didn't say anything I wouldn't have told Blue directly. Oh, you're in unbelievable. This is funny. You shook your heads at your parents, even as you fought a blush when you remembered what they'd been discussing. All right, all right, you got me. I'm sorry for being gossipy and saying uh, and saying that about your friend. I can be bad too. Let's go. Well, get out of your way now. Mom sighed in mock defeat and made her way down the hall. Ma followed after her with a hushed giggle. Now you were alone in the living room, tasked with waiting for Cove. And that was just fine with you. It hadn't been so hot outside, you would have visited him at his house a long time ago. You took a seat at the kitchen counter and settled in for the wait. As expected, there was a knock on the door a few minutes later. When you got up and answered, your, neighbor's, your neighbor was standing on the other side. He came in once you stepped aside to let him pass, giving a, giving a little wave. You greeted him as you typically did. I am going to hug you! He stiffened in your arms, then relaxed seconds later. One would think he'd be used to your hugs after all these years. One would think, but one would also remember that Cove is an adorable boy. Cove is always good at being an adorable boy. Uh, hey. His voice was cracked as he struggled to say something. You didn't feel worried about that. That was just how he usually reacted when you were close by. Cove sighed and wiped at his face a little bit. You noticed a sheen of sweat across his brow. He must be glad to be back in the air-conditioned place, even if he had only had to walk across the street to get there. So, what's with the sudden visit? I don't want to do anything. Not when it's like this. He gestured vaguely to the humid air hanging around. So... I thought I could at least do nothing with you. Baby boy! Thank you! I would love to do nothing with you! Ah! You thought it was really sweet. His words were nice and expressed real fondness for you in a strange sort of way, which was usually the case with Cove. Have you had lunch yet? I was gonna do it soon. He shook his head. Not really. I don't really 
I haven't really felt like eating because of the heat. I probably should have lunch. I didn't have breakfast this morning. Great, we can eat lunch together. You didn't eat all they gotta have something now. You urged Cove in the direction of the kitchen. He stumbled after you. Uh, okay. As, as one, you headed into the kitchen. You crossed your arms as you glanced around, wondering what you should scrounge up for a meal. I don't want to eat anything that's warmed up. Is there something cold or not cooked? Yeah. After a bit of back and forth, the two of you concluded that you should raid the fit fridge and cabinet in order to make sandwiches. With that settled, you had planned to decide on the outside layer first. There was a wide variety to choose from since everyone in your house had their own favorites. There was white bread, wheat bread, sourdough, mixed grain, gluten-free, and pita bread. What the hell? What is going on here? Hey. Could you take the grain one for me? Sure. You reached for the mixed grains, then made your decision. Hmm. Hmm. Cinnamon swirl bread? That wasn't one of the choices. Hmm, 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 hmm. We're gonna do white bread. I, I'm, I'm basic. I'm very basic. You pulled out the white bread too, setting both items onto the counter. Then you had to decide what the main direction of the sandwich would go in. I want a savory sandwich or a sweet sandwich. Let's go with sweet. Something sweet would be perfect in the sweltering, sweltering, sweltering heat. As for specific ingredients, oh, 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 oh. Hmm. Well, we're gonna get strawberries, chocolate, marshmallow, and honey. Hmm. Hmm. Should we do apples? I don't think I've had apples and strawberries. Mangoes and strawberries? Let's do mangoes. That's it. United to yourself with a quiet hum, satisfied. The two of you bustled around the kitchen, opening and closing things in order to collect everything you needed for your individual sandwiches. You focused intently on assembling your own for the most part. When you were close to being done though, you glanced over at your neighbor. Cove was putting his sandwich together, delicately, his brow fur furrowed, sticking out just barely. There were open jars of peanut butter and honey near his plate, as well as a banana peel. So he was making a peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwich on mixed grain bread. Sounded great, god darn it, maybe you should have made yourself a, make, you should have one yourself for a, a different time. Curiosity sated, you turned back to your plate and finished your own creation. By the time you were done, Cove had already cleaned up his workstation. He turned to face you, studying your sandwich briefly. A small smile tugged on the corners of his mouth. You guessed it didn't look inedible to him at least. Done? Yeah. Cool. Yay, it's a... He waited, for, he waited as you quickly returned the ingredients and cleaned up your uten utensils. Then the two of you collected your respective plates. You both agreed heading upstairs to hang out in your room. You and Cove entered your bedroom while balancing your food on plates. Nothing fell, so it was, it was a successful trip. Cove took a seat on the ground, stre stretching out on the hardwood floor in an attempt to keep a bit cooler. He immediately took a big bite of his sandwich, chewed, then hummed happily. This sandwich is really good. At least that's something. At this point, you sat down and started on your own sandwich. Obviously, you were a pro at making sandwiches! He leaned back on his hands while chewing and glanced around. His every movement was sluggish. Wanna do something? He seemed, it seemed the plan of not doing anything at all had hardly, had already worn thin, despite his lack of enthusiasm. Let's just go with yeah. He rolled his head back, looking up at the ceiling. What about Hangman? <gasps> yes. Sure, why not? You put your plate to the side and pulled out some markers and a scrap of paper. As you laid everything on the floor, he scooted back to make more room in front of you. Oh, we're gonna play Hangman? He's gonna be adorable while doing this. What are you gonna do, Cove? Cove picked up one of the markers. <clears throat> Mm. 
that's, um... Can I pick the phrase? Okay, I wanted to guess first anyway. He smiled briefly before he bent over the paper and began sketching the hangman frame. He then stopped, pursing his lips in thought. He tapped the end of his marker against his cheek. You watched silently as Kof looked down at the paper, up at your face, and then off to the side in a loop. His marker kept tapping his cheek the entire time. You raised an eyebrow. He'd suggested the game and wanted to pick the phrase, but it looked like he didn't actually have anything in mind for it. I think he's just debating on if he's actually willing to go through with it. What you gonna say, cute Kobe? Finally, he put empty lines on the paper to signify spots for letters. All right, you can start guessing. You peered over. His secret phrase consisted of three words. The first two had three letters, and the last had four. You thought about your first guess would be. I uh, always go with an A. You got one! Yes! The first round, you were about to take another bite of your sandwich when a thought occurred to you. I wonder if anyone turned off the TV downstairs. Hmm? The TV, it was on earlier, but no one was really watching. Then everyone started leaving the living room. I don't, I know I didn't turn it off. It might still be on downstairs with no one there. Ko smiled crookedly at that. Oh. Poor show, playing with no one around to enjoy it. What was it? Uh, you squinted off in the middle distance, trying to recall the show's name. I feel like it was some kind of crime solving drama? Cove nodded sleepily, his eyes closed, then opened again with some effort. Can you give me any specifics? Maybe I can guess it. Um, well... You rested your chin on your open palm, grudgingly, groggily thinking as hard as you could. I remember there was a woman with long blonde hair, I think. She was the one solving crimes, like as a detective or something. We don't really remember, Cove. I don't have a clue what Blue is talking about here. There were some scenes in a police station because someone got arrested. You lapsed into silence, the both of you thoughtful, then Cove chuckled. It wasn't that funny, but you joined in the laughter anyway. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Me neither, and I just saw it. Okay, well, hmm. Let's go with more vowels. Done. E is another bet. Let's do E and then we'll do U. Oh, look at that! Yes, good guess. Another round came and went and Cove grumbled as he readjusted himself. His features were twisted into a grimace. I feel so sticky, ugh. I'm gonna be stuck to this floor forever now. Looks like we'll both be stuck here forever now. I'm sticky too. You're right. Even when we're gray and old, we'll still be right here. Yeah, we have to accept our fate. You giggled under your breath at such a bizarre scenario. Cove chuckled a smile as well. Then you returned to the game. Okay, obviously, I'm not sure there's going to be another vowel. So let's do... N. No, sorry. I'm gonna start adding a little person. Aw. Cove spoke up once more, catching your attention. He was peering down at the piece of paper between you, his expression thoughtful. Hmm. You know, Hangman is kind of a creepy game. Why do people come up with it? Why do they play it? Hmm. Maybe it's what they had instead of real court trials back then. That'd be funny, but what the hell does that have to do with this conversation? Maybe. Maybe I'll do that too. That said, the two of you turned your attention back to the game. Okay. That middle one has to be R, right? A-R-E? Because I can't think of another word that's three letters but it begins with an A and ends with an E. Yay! By this point, Cove had finished his sandwich. Yours was almost gone too. But now you were getting thirsty. You brought it up to your neighbor. Should we go downstairs to get some drinks? I was thinking that too, but I don't really want to get up. Me neither. You looked over at him, narrowing your eyes with false suspicion. But hey, what happened to you not being able to get up ever again because you were stuck to the floor? <laughs> That's still true. I mean, we're not actually going, are we? I only thought about it. You rolled your eyes and dropped the issue, defeated. 
Cove grinned a little at your disappointment over his victory. Mm. What's another three letter letter word that doesn't have any of the that doesn't have an A or an E? Alright, let's do a U. Oh! Oh, it's gotta be you. You are cute! Oh! That's adorable, Cove! He's so adorable! I'm definitely gonna get it. Look how adorable he is! He's adorable. You are cute. That was the phrase that Kova spent so long settling on. You stared at it. A few correct letters in, you had a feeling you knew what the phrase was. Still, you felt butterflies in your stomach at seeing it clear as day on the paper. You took in the words for a moment longer, then you looked up at Cove. He had trouble meeting your shocked gaze, a smile settling awkwardly on his lips. His next words left him in a mumble. I, it was I mean... all I could think of at the time. Oh, adorable boy! I'm gonna wrap my arms around him. It was an instinct. You leaned over and wrapped your arms around him in a hug. Look at you! Oh, you're cute! Damn, Cove. Cove ducked his head at your cursing, clearly still feeling awkward about the move he pulled. He turned away from you, his cheeks tinted pink. A moment passed between the two of you. Now would be the perfect time to change the subject, but you didn't. He didn't either. Things started feeling a bit more personal all of a sudden. You looked into Cove's ocean eyes and saw yourself staring back. I think, I really think you were cute, seriously. Ko's features softened at your words, but he remains serious. Thanks. I meant it too. Finally, he broke eye contact. Um, I've heard at some point you're supposed to start liking types of people. Guys or girls or whoever. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't really noticed that yet. Nothing's changed. Not in a big way. Not for everybody. <clears throat> Maybe I have to grow up a more, but at least with... You waited, but he trailed off. He wasn't going to keep talking. You pouted. You wanted him to finish his thought. At least what? You shook off the strangeness of the situation and decided to be supportive. Maybe you just don't like anybody, or maybe you like all types of people. That's normal, too. Cove seemed to appreciate the thought, if a smile that appeared on his lips was any indication. But the expression was quick to disappear. He peered over at you, looking nervous. Okay, what about you? What kind of guy or a person do you like? He winced and seemed to be mentally kicking himself for saying it like that. He considered his question carefully. Did you know who or what you liked? I'm so freaking Lulik, he's right in front of me! Hmm. Hmm. Uh, do I actually tell him that there's only one person I've ever felt that kind of thing for? <sighs> Let's just go general. Yeah, general. But specifically, when it came to how you felt towards boys... How you felt towards girls! I don't know. We're going with myself. Hmm. Let's go there. For people who were, aren't exclusively male or female. You returned your attention to Cove. He was waiting patiently for your response. All right, Cove, let's go for it. He listened intently, taking in every word as you tried to convey how you felt. He definitely perked up a bit when you mentioned having some interest in romantic relationships. Oh, baby boy, I love you. This is gonna be so, you're gonna make this so awkward, aren't you, Mr. Cove? Then he scratched the back of his head, sheepish, sheepish. Um, 
I'm not really sure how we ended up talking about all this when we were just started out playing Hangman. But it was good, I think. The conversation had a mind of its own. Cove chuckled a little bashfully. He glanced around, clearly scrambling for something else to say. So, have you written anything new recently? Oh yeah, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you! The conversation took a lighter turn after that, and it felt like you got closer that afternoon. Finally, the blazing sun began to set. To your relief, the air cooled a bit as a result. You pulled yourself off the floor, as did Cove. With some minor complaints, you both stretched your arms, groaning, and yawned into your hands. You glanced out your window briefly, taking in the soft reds and pinks and purples of the late afternoon sky. Somehow, you had made it through the scorching hot day in one piece. Cove turned towards you, mo mo motioning towards your window with his chin. Wanna go outside? It might be better out there now that it, than it is here now. Let's do it! I'm sick and tired of being cooped up inside all day! The two of you took your time heading downstairs. You stopped briefly to grab a drink of water, then continued on your way. You stepped outside, one after the other, your destination being the familiar, hi familiar hills behind your house. This time of day was quiet outside. The flowers blew gently in the wind, petals trembling but stubbornly hanging in there. You felt the breeze cool your heated skin and you relaxed your shoulders. Cove closed his eyes, releasing a deep breath. <sighs> I really love it out here. Your opinion sure has changed since you were first on this hill. Cove chuckled, not even attempting to deny your words. A beat passed, but his gaze didn't stray from your own, his voice impossibly soft as when he spoke up again. I'm glad I met you, Blue. You're really important to me, you know? You're special to me, Cope. Your voice came out equally delicate. From the way his features brightened, though, you knew he heard you. Then Cove reached over and held your hand without, an without another word. Oh. Even as the sun disappeared completely and the sky darkened, you and Cove remained side by side for as long as you possibly could. And there we have it, everybody. This went on longer than I wanted it to, but I, the first one only took 20 minutes and this last one took over 30 minutes. So um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Our Life Beginning and Always. We can do one more episode, probably the mall. And I will debate next time on if we're going to actually just do all the moments and just get it out of the way. Or if we're going to do a road trip and end it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye, everyone.